Ludicrous Feed is proudly sponsored by Carloop, EV and Warbox. Hey everyone, it's Tom here from Ludicrous Feed. Thanks for joining us. And next to me here is the MG4 Essence 64 kilowatt hour trim. Uh, many thanks to MG Australia for loaning me this press car again for the week. And I've got to say, I absolutely love this vehicle. And I think this is about as close as it gets to a perfect hatchback EV. And I'll give you my reasons why very shortly. I had the MG4 Excite 51 kilowatt hour last week. I wasn't as impressed. Uh, those details are in that video I launched last week. So check that one out. Uh, but I feel like this 64 kilowatt hour uh, variant is much more complete. And if you really love the look of the MG4, I would certainly give this a lot more consideration. Uh, it's not quite perfect. That's why I said it's almost perfect. There's a couple of things that still uh, I am nitpicking over, but keep watching and I'll give you my reasons uh, for saying that. All right, so let's do a walk around of the vehicle as always. So let's start with the front of the car and I'll try to pick up uh, the things that make this different to the 51 kilowatt hour Excite. As usual, the aggressive looking front, uh, again, looks like a snarling animal or converging at the front at the logo here. And uh, now down the bottom, we've got this active uh, intake at the grill. Um, that's to help cool the battery, keep it at optimum temperature. And um, this beautiful volcano orange is just gorgeous, isn't it? I love it. It's a two-tone color uh, com comparing the orange here at the bottom to the top of the roof. It's not a glass roof, but that black appearance at the top makes it look really lovely. Uh, makes the car stand out from the 51 kilowatt hour Excite, I feel anyway. All right, so moving on from the front here, um, you've got these aerodynamic lines. We just follow this one here. Okay, so that sort of goes over the uh, wing mirror and then goes out that way. Again, the door handles aren't flush, so that does affect the dynamics a little bit, a bit of turbulence. And then this line here goes out to the rear of the car with the rear lights over there. You'll notice too at the back, you've got um, now these extra wings or extra spoilers at the roof. With the MG4 Excite, it sort of just ended very abruptly, but now you've got this aerodynamic shape at the back, and I think that looks much better, much sportier, and more complete to the back of the vehicle, so I love it. As we move more around to the back here, the MG4 Excite had a, uh, I guess, a piano black finish, which I didn't quite like, to make this lip of the vehicle. Now we've got this, I guess, plastic over the lighting, and if I unlock the car, or lock it, then unlock it, you see how there's lighting right across the back now. So the one sort of strip lighting uh, just separated by the logo and also up the top here, there's lighting as well. Um, you'll see that better at nighttime, of course. But that just, I think just, that just adds to the vehicle, makes it look much sportier, in my opinion. The diffuser as well is great. Um, again, just uh, increases the uh, downforce of the vehicle, uh, helps with aerodynamics. And up here on the window, you've got the, uh, you've got the rear wiper, which is great for a hatchback, of course. Moving back around this side now, let me unlock the car again. It tends to lock itself, which is okay. Again, charge port there. Um, CCS2, DC cover is locked or covered. Um, I had an issue with the flap of the MG4 Excite, so that, just be careful, that may pop off there. So just be careful with that, it just shuts like that. Yeah, have a look at the lighting here. That just looks lovely, doesn't it? As the, uh, the wind goes over the lights, it just is one continuous form across the body. So very aerodynamic. Okay, so looking at the wheels and tires. Now these are aero caps, again, helping with aerodynamics, but they are alloys underneath. And it's a Bridgestone tire and 18 inch wheels compared to 17 inch in the MG4 Excite. Okay, so that is um, pretty much the walk around of the exterior of the um, MG4 64. A few more details about this vehicle. So this is a 64 kilowatt hour NMC or lithium ion nickel based battery compared to the Excite 51, which is LFP or lithium ion phosphate. Uh, 64 kilowatt hours will give you 435 kilometers of WLTP range running on these 18 inch tires. Um, 150 kilowatt powertrain compared to 125 kilowatts in the 51 kilowatt hour Excite version and um, the same amount of torque as the base version and gets you from zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 7.2 seconds. And uh, it comes with the MG seven year unlimited kilometer warranty as well. That's all standard across all vehicles and has a uh, faster charging time with DC. So 140 kilowatts compared to uh, 80 kilowatts in the uh, 51 variant, making this a much more viable option for road tripping because you get a faster charge rate. So there it is, the MG4 Essence 64 kilowatt hour. 
just a nice little walk around to start with and then we'll go inside the vehicle and give you some more details of the uh, inside of the car. Okay, so let's start with the back of the car. It's not a power lift gate, similar to the um, 51 variant. Got the parcel shelf, which is removable. Again, nice big boot for a hatchback. Uh, it comes with a portable charging kit. Uh, this is also V2L or vehicle to load, but there's no adapter included. I believe it's a separate accessory. And then you've got this two level floor. So we've got this sub floor, no spare tire, but there is a compressor and repair kit as well down there. Um, and again, quite spacious, enough for weekly shopping and some suitcases for a road trip. We've got some netting here with two separate compartments, this side and that side. And up here, 60-40 splits, which we'll have a look at in a second. And a bit of lighting here as well on the boot, so. I like this bit up here, the spoilers giving it extra shape, a bit more detail as well. Okay, and I'll just show you the uh, front of the car, the bonnet real quick. Okay, old school bonnet open. Just gonna find the flick there. It's not hydraulic, so you've got to put the strut up to hold it up. But um, no frunk, no storage, windscreen wiper fluid. Ground up EV platform, so battery on the uh, floor of the car, making it nice and balanced. Okay, um, let's go inside the car, but I just want to show you the door open now. It's a nice solid thunk. Again, not European, as I said last time, but it's pretty good, I must say. It's a nice sound when I shut the door. Beautiful. Um, the mirrors do fold in in the Essence variant and this blind spot monitoring as well. So some extra safety features uh, for the Essence trim. Okay, so let's hop inside the vehicle. I'll open this for Joy and then I will hop in myself. Okay, so inside the car, let's start with the uh, steering column. Again, just a manual... Um, control and uh, adjustment. The mirrors do fold in, like I said, and uh, you can fold in by pressing this button here, or pressing down there. That's just the controls for left and right, but you can fold in like that manually. And also they fold uh, automatically on locking as well. And the usual lock controls and window controls down here too. The interior at the front at least is pretty similar to the 51 trim. So again, just the basic looking front. Um, that was one criticism I had of the Excite trim and the Essence trim looks very similar as well, just across the front. Plastic, uh, piano black finish. It does the job, but again, nothing uh, too exciting from that point of view. However, what has changed uh, is the seating. So you see now the seats are now two-tone. You've got this fabric still, which I found a little bit basic in the 51, but now you've got an extra bit of contrast with this polyurethane fake leather or whatever vegan leather you want to call it. That just adds a bit more contrast when you're sitting down, a bit more comfort as well, and probably longer lasting too uh, than just fabric. A bit of blue trim, just a bit of contrast again. But everything else is very similar. You've got the storage down here, and then you've got the netting here as well. Storage down here, which you can close for privacy. And then down here you've got two cup holders, and then you've got USB-C and uh, USB-A connectivity. So the C one is for charging, and then the A one is for Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, which is not wireless, it's wired. And then up here on the center you've got um, Qi charging or wireless charging. Same problem where the phone may fly off if you leave that there, if you accelerate too quickly. I guess the issue with these cars that don't have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, I kind of want to put my phone there, but I'm just concerned about putting a phone that's already connected by a charging cable and then putting it on a wireless charging pad. So just a bit of feedback for uh, companies that don't offer wireless uh, connectivity for Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Same thing, gear controls down here and then the uh, brake, park brake down here too. Again, uh, fairly standard. I like having less controls when it comes to gear shifting for EVs, which is good. Back to the steering column, very similar again. You can put these two as favorites uh, to get air, air conditioning or drive modes. And then you can adjust the uh, center screen, which is a seven inch drive cluster screen, which we'll go through very shortly. Left-hand side indicator, uh, automatic lights on and auto high beam as well. Um, we've got wipers on the right stalk and you can also adjust 
uh, the back wiper as well from there. No auto rain sensing function. Um, and then the standard air conditioning vents across here. And you've got a glove box there. Same, same, not much has changed from the 51. Storage down in both driver and passenger area with uh, drink holders. And then up the top here, you've got uh, room cabin lighting, sunglass holder, which I quite like. Normally EVs have sunglass holders. Good to see them making a comeback. And you've got a uh, um, holder here for, I guess, parking tickets. And the visor's got a mirror as well. Comes out, does it open out? No, it doesn't. Same as 51. Okay, so um, so that's kind of the controls. Very similar again to the 51. Uh, what is different now is the infotainment screen. There's a few more things I want to talk about uh, in this uh, 64 trim, which make it a bit more complete, like I said. The air conditioning system uh, looks completely different in the 64 trim versus the 51. Um, you've got things like uh, heated steering wheel, uh, heated seats for the front two seats. And then if you favorite it here on the steering wheel, um, and if you say playing Apple CarPlay or whatever on that side, you don't want to go through the menu, you can actually press, say for example, that button, and then this comes up like that, so you can adjust the temperature like that using um, the dial there on the steering column, which is quite good. Okay, so that's the air conditioning, and then another quick way to do it as well, if you're just on the home page, you can um, probably press this one, and then this comes up too as well. Um, so the 10 inch infotainment screen is a bit more detailed compared to the 51. Again, another reason why I think it's more complete having an essence trim. Uh, there is the temperature and weather uh, as a forecast as well, which is quite a nice touch. I guess you can actually have this on and broadcasting it to you every morning when you start the car. It's either useful or distracting depending on your preference. Okay, let's go back to the home screen. Then you've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. If you plug in, and I'll just plug my phone in, that way you can see what it looks like. There it is plugged in and then um, the Apple CarPlay icon will light up or come on automatically. And there I am, there's Waze which I always use and then um, other all the Apple CarPlay apps come up as well. If you want to go back to the MG screen, you press that one. Um, the charging um, settings are here. And because it's an NMC battery, I would recommend only charging 80% every day for battery longevity, unless you're going for a road trip. Um, then you can also adjust like that, so there you go, by 10% increments. And AC current charging uh, speed, 6, 8 or 16 amps. And then you can uh, schedule charging as well, so that's quite handy. Start stop time, which is better than Tesla actually. Um, and then allow, because Tesla doesn't have charging end times in their cars. And then discharge settings is for the vehicle to load. You can set a limit to how much you want to discharge the battery if you're plugging something into your car and then energy consumption graphs there, which is uh, quite nice to have those stats. Again, I find that there's less lag with the um, SN64 trim. There was a bit of lag just getting through menus in the 51, so again, another reason to potentially upgrade to this version. Okay, so back to here, we've got radio or different media uh, inputs. Uh, navigation, there is uh, no trip planning that I can see. I'll just pause that. Um, so for example, you can, you can choose EV charges nearby, but I think with trip planning, it doesn't tell you which ones to stop at. Um, so that's just a, something to note. That's why I tend to use Waze anyway, because um, the nav is not, not as good as Waze or Google Maps, I'm just saying. Um, then you scroll across this way, and then there are other options as well. Um, user profile is there too. Okay, MG Smart app, which I don't have access to. Let's see, there's a bit of a lag just when you press buttons still, but not as bad as it was. Um, phone, vehicle settings, uh, video, 360 camera, which you can bring up also with the favorites button on the steering wheel. But if I want to bring up on the screen here, you can. There's a 360 camera, uh, rear camera, and you can sort of choose which camera you want to use as well. That, that's quite a handy feature, I must say. Again, this is not available in the Excite version, so another reason to upgrade to Essence. And you can adjust the settings too, so you can have the camera come on when you're turning at low speed, which I didn't quite like because I had that in the Aura. It's very distracting actually. It takes away from the navigation every time it comes up. And the parking guidance line preferences there too. Um, and then, yep, other settings with regards to, yep, the car, you know, background theme, language, time format, etc., time zone, um, Bluetooth, wireless network, which is... Um, Wi-Fi, vehicle hotspotting, hmm, okay, you can use the 
Car is a vehicle hotspot, interesting. Um, data traffic, voice control, volume settings, system settings, etc. This doesn't have over the air updates, you have to bring it back to your dealer or service representative to get it updated. Um, and then let's go back to the vehicle settings so I can show you what other vehicle features this has. So we've got different drive modes which you can choose via the steering column. Energy recovery, um, low, medium, high adaptive. So the XI51 didn't have a one pedal driving because um, a software update was pushed after they were delivered. Um, this press car does have one pedal mode driving. You can put it on like that. Unfortunately, it does turn off every time you start the car again in a new drive. So that's a little bit frustrating. And it's possibly a little bit too harsh too. Maybe I'm just not used to it yet. Um, I just don't feel like it's as blended as other vehicles I've driven to. So just take note of that. Um, and energy saving mode is there as well for long drives. If you want to preserve battery range, uh, MG pilot, driver assist system, settings and uh, alert sensitivity i always put it back to low it always goes back to medium so there must be a safety thing where it just goes back to the medium one um, and then other sensitivities here low again i've put this to low so many times but it just goes back to medium um, convenience you can switch you can set what these buttons do as i said before on the steering wheel so these two are the favorites buttons currently i've got that as the 360 camera on the left one and ac on the right so if i press that the cameras come up like that that's quite handy if you're parking for example I don't know how far you are away from the wall uh, auto fold unfold as I said the mirrors do fold which is quite good uh, auto door lock unlock using keys for just driver or all doors and door unlock modes as well lighting for if you want the car lights to stay on and auto holders there as well which is good to know so as you can see like even though it's not like super flash looking like everything is kind of there that you want, especially in the 64 trim. Like it's, it feels a lot more complete with the functions, right? Uh, you know, small things like folding mirrors, 360 camera, blind spot monitoring, um, a few more safety features too, so rear traffic alert. So in my opinion, this is a lot closer to the Dolphin Premium. Um, price of this car is $47,990 uh, MSRP before on roads, whereas Dolphin BYD, which is the closest competitor, is $44 so $3,000 more for this car and compare this to the Excite which is $38,990 you're actually paying $9,000 more for this vehicle so I guess you have to ask yourself is it worth the uh, external appearance the extra safety features the uh, better convenience functions uh, the higher level trim um, yeah for an extra $9,000 I feel like this is a more complete vehicle overall anyway uh, having driven both vehicles and one more thing too before we go to the back, um, the rear view mirror is powered, so uh, it auto dims uh, when there's high glare situations like at night time, for example. Okay, so here we go into the back seat um, and I've got this seat quite far back. So what I'm gonna do is actually move it forward. And so on the driver's side, I've got powered controls there, which is good. Actually move that forward. Whereas the Excite version at manual controls, that's just for driver's seat only because the passenger seat doesn't have it. So that's for an extra, um, benefit of the Excite 64 version. Okay, so back we go into the second row, so a bit more room now. So you'll notice that with most EVs, um, the floor is, um, the floor is lifted up because the battery is sitting on the floor of the vehicle. So, you know, if, you've, uh, if you want to put your feet under there, it's a bit tighter than otherwise would be for say, a non-EV. Um, that's just because the battery is sitting on the floor, the floor is raised. But because this is a ground up EV platform, the floor is almost flat. It's pretty close. It's like, you know, probably three centimeters where the hump is. I mean, this is where traditionally where the transmission tunnel would go, but because it's an EV, it's a bit, um, it's a bit flatter, which is good. So let's go through the second row. Um, again, no glass up here, so it's a little bit dark. Currently, Joy's got a backlight to help me film, but uh, if I get Joy to take the light away, you'll see it's a little bit darker now. There's a bit of light coming through, but if you're in a dark car park or indoors, um, then it is actually quite dark. So that's one feedback I wish MG had put in lighting here. I'm here. Voice control mustn't say this word too often, which is the... I found more than one toilet. <laughs> which one would you like to pick? I'm good for now, thank you. Uh, so I won't use those two initials because obviously they pick it up. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble understanding. Okay, nice pockets here in the back of the car, um, making it a bit more luxurious again um, because of the premium trim uh, in the Essence version, uh, whereas it'd be fabric in the uh, Excite version. So a bit more pockets for passengers behind. 
and that's that photo that we talked about earlier. Removable headrests, and all that translates to the passenger side as well. A bit more storage. Down here we've got uh, one USB-A port for charging, and then you've got more storage down here, a little cubby hole down there. But uh, in terms of the door cards, very similar to the MG, uh, four Excite version trim, and there's storage down here too as well. And as I said, 60-40 split, um, and the back seats look good too, don't they? A bit, that, bit of that uh, uh, PU or uh, polyurethane mix with fabric uh, seats. I think, I think this kind of stuff just makes it look a bit nicer. Um, just a bit more luxurious, a bit less basic, so again, I think it's possibly worth a bit more money to give it a bit more complete of an experience uh, in this Essence trim. So seat controls down here to pull it down, 60-40 split, um, opens up to the boot there. And same with this, oh, you can just pull it down there. See through to the back as well. And these headrests are removable as well if you need that extra bit of storage. All three are removable like that, which is good. Um, and in terms of height, I'm 175 centimeters, five foot nine. So from my head to the roof, one fist. And then, not too bad, quite a bit of room here. One, two, two and a half fists from my knees to the back of the driver's seat too. So yeah, actually quite comfortable sitting here. I wouldn't mind doing this uh, for a sort of medium uh, length road trip. So yeah, I think it's, it's a good, good comfortable size for a hatchback. Except maybe in summer. Except maybe in summer because there is no vents uh, down here. I forgot, it's quite a cool day today. There's no air conditioning vents, so um, that's one drawback again. It'll be quite, quite warm. Um, hopefully the vents are strong enough from the front coming through to the back because we haven't had too many warm days yet in our spring at this stage. Okay, so uh, always nice to show the, um, the boot space if you need it. So 60-40 split, 60 part and then 40 split. So if you need that extra room going to the hardware store or furniture shops, um, then that is quite nice, quite a bit of room here. So partial, shelf partial shelf is removable, so let's uh, take this off for you so you can see what it looks like without. Uh, there we go. Easy enough to remove. Ta-da! Plenty of room. Putting in flat pack furniture, etc. All right, everyone. So let's go for a drive and. Um, what I really want to do today is focus on the handling aspects of this vehicle because, I mean, you know, between this car and the BYD Dolphin Premium, I think you would buy this car uh, in all variants uh, for the handling aspects because this is a rear-wheel drive vehicle. Let's face it, rear-wheel drive vehicles generally handle better than front-wheel drive vehicles, particularly if there's no torque vectoring in front-wheel drive. So if you really are a driver's driver and you're really after a car that handles well, then I'd probably pick this vehicle uh, over the BYD Dolphin. There are other reasons why you might pick the BYD Dolphin over this, but we'll get into that very shortly. So we spent some time discussing, um, you know, the benefits of this vehicle, which is the SN64 trim over the Excite 51. Uh, we spent quite a bit of time doing that. You know, we talked about the safety improvements. We talked about the uh, trim on the inside, the convenience. Um, we talked about the more premium elements. Um, one thing I do want to focus on during this drive is, of course, the rear-wheel drive powertrain uh, improvements. Both are rear-wheel drive, but this has got 150 kilowatt power, uh, whereas the Excite version is 125 kilowatts of power, so an extra 25 kilowatts of power. And I have to say, sub subjectively, having this almost back-to-back, -back, I would say this is a lot more fun to drive. I feel like this hugs the road a lot better on the urban urban roads I'm driving on and and um, it just seems to just round the curves a lot better and I would say you know that alone for me who enjoys driving I think that would probably push me over to get this vehicle the 64 over a 51 uh, apart from the looks apart from all the things I've talked about just the fact that it has more power um, makes it a much more enjoyable drive particularly if this is going to be a day-to-day -day drive right I mean you can argue that you wouldn't probably get this car as a road tripper because you, there are other options out there for that purpose. You'd probably get this as more of a city car. And if you're gonna use this as a city car, you probably want 
a more enjoyable experience if this is your daily ride. Uh, particularly if you've got the budget to stretch that, stretch that extra $9,000. Um, so yeah, that's, that's definitely worth considering. The one drawback of this car over, say, actually I'll just put the cruise on to show you, so I'll just pop that on there and just scroll up to 80 kilometers an hour. The one drawback of this vehicle, the 64 Essence, is that it does not come in LFP. So it's only an NMC trim or NMC battery pack. So that's probably the one reason I may not get this car because as I've said many times on my channel, uh, I much prefer the LFP or lithium ion phosphate battery chemistry for reasons such as um, you know better longevity, better voltage stability at a higher state of charge, better fire safety profile, uh, no cobalt. So those reasons alone might be what might be holding me back from getting you know, something like this. But NMC certainly has its advantages. Uh, it's a more dense battery pack, so the weight differential between this car and the Excite is only 50 kilograms, even though this has, you know, technically uh, almost 100 kilometers more range. Um, so that's certainly something to consider in terms of battery density. So I'll try and find some, um, not too twisty roads, but I'll join the Pacific Highway very shortly uh, so we can demonstrate some of the handling capabilities just going through uh, a, a bit busier, busier roads as well. So let's spend some time now comparing this vehicle to say the BYD Dolphin Premium, which is what you've got to compare it to. And even though this car is $3,000 more, again, having that rear wheel drive powertrain might be something uh, worth paying for. Uh, in terms of battery size, um, this is a 64 kilowatt hour battery versus I think 60 kilowatt hour battery in the Dolphin Premium. Now see the Dolphin Premium comes obviously with a BYD Blade battery. Uh, and so that's LFP, so that's certainly got its uh, advantages as I've discussed. The Dolphin is all front wheel drive powertrain, so you, I've not, by the way, I've not driven the Dolphin yet, so I, I can't comment too much, but just from experience, most front wheel drive cars that I've driven have that torque steering, which is, um, you know, it tends to oversteer a little bit, uh, particularly in the wet, uh, particularly turning out from a tight left turn in Australia. Um, you just get a bit of oversteering, a bit of fishtailing out at the back there, so it does slip, unfortunately, front wheel drive vehicles. Um, other things worth mentioning between the two cars is um, the fact that the safety profiles are now very similar between the MG4 Essence, which is this one, and the BYD Dolphin Premium. Um, now with the 360 degree camera, blind spot monitoring, uh, and rear traffic alert. The MG4 safety profile is now very similar. Uh, both vehicles have a five star and cap rating, which is good. Um, the one thing the Dolphin might have over this is the over the air software updates, which BYD does dish out for free, which is good. Uh, if you want to update the software here, you've got to bring it back to the dealer, which is uh, slightly frustrating. Um, and also this car is one pedal driving for those who want that, whereas uh, BYD vehicles generally do not. So a bit of handling there, just slipping out and trying to get to the best lane. We'll try and do that today in the rain. Uh, the wipers work pretty well. The blades are okay. Um, there are some vehicles I've driven which, uh, despite being brand new, uh, despite being more expensive actually, they still aren't great wipers. So not rain sensing, but um, they do the job for sure. Okay, so let's uh, turn left here on the Pacific Highway try to find the best lanes back onto the Gore Hill Freeway. Try and do a bit of a test there. Again, the acceleration is pretty good. 7.2 seconds, 0 to 100. Great handling the wet. Loving this 150 kilowatt rear wheel drive powertrain, by the way. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's do a bit of an acceleration test now once we get the green light on our side. Foot to the floor, no slippage whatsoever. Fantastic, love it, well within the speed limit. Yeah, so look, I just, I do want to address a little bit about the comments that were made about my 51 video. Look, as you guys know, I drove that vehicle, or well, not that particular vehicle, but that variant all the way to Canberra with Riz, a good friend Riz, who joins us on the channel sometimes. And um, at the time, yeah, it's a pre-prod car, pre-production car, and we had a great time uh, on the freeway. You don't need to worry too much about the you know, powertrain, rear-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, whatever. It's, it's on the freeway. It'll cruise fine. Um, 
and obviously for the price it's still a really good car like i think honestly i like i said i haven't driven the dolphin yet but between the mg4 excite uh the BYD dolphin and the aura i think the mg4 is probably probably still the best bet between the three obviously it's still not the perfect car and that's why i was a little bit harsh with my comments on the video because you know it's it's still not the perfect vehicle despite the price you've got to kind of overlook the cheapest price on the market and still look discerningly at the the faults of the car and and balance that up against the the benefits of course just because it's electric we we can't overlook those those faults the basicness of the vehicle still remains even in this trim um, and that's certainly the one drawback of this car uh, over say the BYD Dolphin which has a more premium interior and probably better colors to choose from as well so by by any means this is not but uh, not the perfect perfect EV even for a hatchback segment so that's why uh, I make those comments because I do want to be more honest with the reviews I know it's it's one car sales car of the year the MG4 but I know you know we can always improve right despite um, despite it being a really good car still um, there are definitely elements that could be improved and hopefully with the next iteration of MG4 we'll see those improvements as we as customers give those give that kind of feedback uh, but overall, still a very good bet, uh, just, no, matter, no matter what variant you buy, uh, whether it be Excite or the Essence versions. Okay, so just heading down the Pacific Highway now. Uh, again, just finding the best lanes here. And the wet still handling really well. All those Bridgestone tires. Again, that's that's something you got to be aware of too when you when you buy these um, cheaper Chinese vehicles um, just be careful with what tires they're equipped with I mean they could be good tires the stuff that they're equipped with that that's not sort of well known like Bridgestone Goodyear Michelin Pirelli but I mean I just don't know those other brands as well so um, and just anecdotally from the what I've driven uh, for example the Aura I just they do slip a little bit so there's a bit of a mismatch there with a tire and, and uh, amount of torque that goes through the wheels And, and so far, the, the, the best sort of small hatchback vehicle that I found that handles really well is actually the Cooper Born. I know it's outside the price range of these cars, but that handled really well, I must say, um, which is the Spanish-made sort of VW platform, ID3 platform. I found that to be really good in, in the rain and um, just trying to get through to the best lanes on, on urban roads. So in terms of handling, so far I found the MG4 almost comparable with that despite it being like 20 almost twenty thousand dollars cheaper than the base cooper born so hats off uh, to mg for making a vehicle that's still very fun to drive at this ridiculous price range so yeah literally up to european standard very good and like these are probably you know ideal conditions to test in for this video right in the wet um trying to find the best lanes on pacific highway having a lot of cars around you Sure, I can bring you to like some off-road or even, you know, some twisty winding road that a lot of these um, companies bring you to when they do the press days and media days, which is great. Like it's a lot of fun for me personally, but not probably as practical for you, the consumer, looking for an honest review from me about what car to buy, right? You want to see stuff like this, I'm sure, um, on, on, a, on a typical road like this, right? This is Pacific Highway, so uh, this is about as typical as it gets, really as a major road in Australia, in Sydney anyway. Okay, so let's get onto the freeway. We'll give you a bit of a test on, on the freeway again. Sure, Sydney's got a lot of motorways, but we, um, yeah, so you might have to use this, you know, use the cruise control function. And uh, this is the Gore Hill, which is currently, I think, 60 kilometers an hour, I think, due to the roadworks. Might be 80 at this bit, and then it goes to 60 when it gets to the Warringa Freeway, which is obviously a bit annoying with all the roadworks, but it is what it is. So again, activating cruise control, which is this button here. Then you can scroll up by five kilometers an hour. It can't go up by one, sadly. Oh no, it can, I'm sorry, my apologies. It can go up by one if you uh, just hold on to the scroll button there. So let's settle at 80, which is what the speed limit is. Let's do the right thing. No auto lane change, which is fine. Um, and then slip into the correct lane. Now New South Wales, it still, um, still allows you to drive in the transit lanes because we're an EV is good and it's got some element of lane keeping assist not not auto steer as such like tesla or polestar 
or um, other vehicles I've driven. But um, it's got this lane keeping function, which is okay. It does correct sometimes, a little bit harshly, but uh, not too bad. I should comment too, actually, I, I, with my 51 Excite video, I did comment on the fact that all this plastic gave off this residue, right? And I stand by that. Uh, but because this car has less plastic, um, well, less sort of true plastic, it's got obviously the fake leather, which is polyurethane, uh, still some plastic, but that fake vegan leather is less smelly, I think, than pure fabric um, and a bit of plastic. So personally, I think if you are sensitive to those kind of smells, then I think I haven't actually smelled any of that plastic yet uh, in this Essence trim, the 64 trim. So I've been pretty happy so far. And then you can change your follow. So you can adjust how close you want to follow. Again, I get confused with graphics like that. Oh, isn't that nice? The graphic for this car has actually got the two aero wings, the, the twin aero um, spoilers up the back showing that it is the Essence trim. That's a nice little touch. Let's go back in this lane here, finding the best lane. Accelerate a bit. And again, I do, you know, I don't make too many apologies that everything looks a bit basic. I say that quite often. All the information I need is here. It's fine. It's just presented you know, very plainly, but that's fine. It's, you've got the trip computer there telling you the trip efficiency, kilometers driven, you know, average speed, and you can cycle between them as you could previously as well. Uh, oh, sorry, just adjust the media volume there, but adjust the menus there, different trip computers, accumulated totals, and then you can look at the navigation if you set the nav, of course, and the brightness level, music, and MG, um, sorry, the, uh, Hi, how can I, help? I have to stop saying that. Oh man, it's just like the, um, the BYD, it's got, if you say the brand name, the letters that the uh, system comes up, just shush. Sorry. I still didn't get that. That's okay. I don't want to talk to you. Okay. Oh. Um, tire pressure, I was saying, over here, back in the binnacle screen here. Okay, so just back to normal there. Okay, so I need to reduce my speed because it is... it is uh, There is uh, roadworks going on here. Just going to be careful. Okay, so... Um, There we go. So I should talk a little bit too about the efficiency. So um, I have done a mini range test before and managed to get it down to 30%. I needed a bit more charge the next day. That's why, why I didn't leave it all the way down to like 10%, which is what I, no I normally do. But at 30% charge, we managed to get, I think it was 240 or 50 kilometers during that time. So with, um, I know the WLTP range is 435 kilometers for this vehicle, but I reckon if you can get anywhere around that 370, 375 kilometer range on sort of mixed urban use like this, a highway slash major road slash small streets, then I think you'd be doing pretty well, 375 kilometers with an efficiency I got of about uh, 17 watt hours per 100 kilometers, which is which was slightly less efficient than the Excite 51. Um, kilowatt hour. So I think the LFP batteries generally tend to be a bit more efficient than the NMC or nickel based lithium ion batteries. So just a bit inf of information for you. <clears throat> okay, so we're heading just um, just back into North Sydney and then um, I'll make my way home from here. But uh, look everyone, I think that's pretty much it from me. Um, I've given you a rundown of the car, just a walkthrough of the vehicle itself. Then I did a comparison of it against the 51 Excite variant. And then we had a little bit of chat uh, between this car and also the Dolphin Premium, which is what you need to compare this to. Um, and probably the closest, closest competitor. So I would think at $47,000, uh, I think it's still a pretty good buy. And I think probably still the best value um, electric hatchback on the market at the moment. From a driver's point of view, like if you are pure, you know, driving enthusiast um, rather than buying this for a passenger vehicle, which I'm sure a lot of you will be doing because this is kind of your town car, city drive, occasional passengers uh, in the back or in the front. But I'm, I'm hearing this is what this car is good for, um, for your daily small commute. Not, not everybody wants a, a bigger car like the Model 3 or even the BYD Seal. Um, 
So I think, you know, for a small size hatchback electric at this price range, like this is a pretty good buy. So I, def I would definitely look into that for sure. Alrighty everyone, well that's it from me, Tom from Ludicrous Fee. Thanks so much for watching. This is the MG, this is the <laughs> those letters of the alphabet for Essence 64 kilowatt hour and nickel based uh, battery chemistry. Um, and many thanks again to that brand, Australian uh, branch for loaning me this vehicle for the last week. Really enjoyed it and stay tuned because I'm actually getting the X power as well. That's the one that does 0 to 100 in 3.8 kilo um, seconds and that's going to be super exciting. I'll definitely take that out for a nice acceleration test and range and handling test as well in particular. So stay tuned for that. Looking forward to bringing that to you. More from the channel so stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, happy charging.